Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Smile, smile. And I will not be, yeah, I will not take uh, from your time more than 15 minutes. Uh, I will speak about a subject which I don't like usually. It's the minority. In my opinion, there is nothing called minority. There is something called component. 50% of the Syrian population are from different components. We have more than 19 different components, religions and nation, national. I'm sorry, do you hear me well? Because I'm, I'm a little bit deaf, I, I don't uh, hear anybody. Anyway, um, all of this 50% of the, of the society, they were under um, a big persecution and escalation during 40 years. And they were forced to work for the system, for the regime. And using all, all the meaning of fears, these people, they were, most of them, under oppression, and they were subject for punishment if they don't remove the way the government wants. This it doesn't mean that there was no social activities against the government or parties, but all of these people who were involved in this, most of them, they ended in exile or in prison or dead. Some people, they said, what is the nation state? This is our problem in Syria. For example, in Austria, the first uh, socialist president, Mr. Karl Rehner, and with his workers, they developed the concept of the nation state. And it means they have a limited space and they have a special constitution which all the population in this area agreed to have it. This, we didn't have it in Syria. Till now, we don't believe that Lebanon is a separate state. It's not only in Syria, in Iraq, for example, they don't believe that Kuwait is a separate state. Or if you ask some Syrians, especially now, what are you? Are you Syrian? Some of them, they will say, we are Arabs. Where is the, uh, the border of these Arabs? It will start where? It will end where? Or some of them, they will say we are Muslims. Where is the beginning of our country? Where is the end of our country? This led that the people in Syria, they were suffering. And they were subject for fragmentation. A big discrimination were accused, practiced against the Kurdish. Not only against the Kurdish, against all the components of our society. Everybody suffered. Nobody knows that before the revolution, third of the political prisoners in our jails, they were Alawites. They revolted against the government. But they didn't revolt because they are Alawites, they revolt because they are Syrian, and they want to have the, their country, the dream country of all of us. Where is the problem? The problem now is to say there is a problem. There is a problem of minorities or components. And these minorities or these components, they have a big fears and they have a legitimated reasons for that. Especially when there is no direct, clear approach from the opposition towards the future of Syria. And no clear nation project. 
And these people, they are subject for marginalization. And they fear that the way they are leaving, it will be changed. It, the other way, that it will be imposed on them. Other culture, other way of living. Um, and there is a big majority around Syria who refuse to have the laicism of Syria. As you know, we have 19 components. Everybody knows that we have different nationalities. We have Kurd, we have Assyrian, Syriac, Armenian, Turkmen, and religious, we have so many as you want. Christian, Alawites, Ismailis, Yazidi, everything. For me, one of the main components, if you may, allowed me to say it's women. Women in our country who suffers. Women who, since three years, they are subject and targeted. Till now, we have 7,500 raped women registered. Non-registered, we don't know. We have 17,000 widows, 15,000 women who are waiting for their men and they don't know if they are still alive. One of our main components also the children. We have till now registered 40,000 orphans. Between refugees and displaced people, we have 13 million. And these people, 75% of them, they are children and women. I saw them in, 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 in Turkey. I saw one woman with 20 children. They are not her children. They are the children of hers, of her cousin, and the neighbors, and the one she founded in, in, in the street. This is the biggest misery in the world. The most important things, we have 250,000 detainees. 250,000, it means these people, they will be killed very soon from torturing, from hunger, from different reasons. But the most dangerous things in our country during these 40 years that the government treated the biggest component in our community, the Muslims in need, as a minority. They were deprived from their political rights. And now, during three years, 99% of the killed people, they were from Sunni. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm Christian myself. I'm, I'm not Sunni, but I'm, I'm to uh, telling you the truth. And, and this is, nobody wants to speak about it. Um, I'm really shamed. I thought this, will not happen. The United Nations promised us after Rwanda that nothing like that will happen. And look, three years, nobody lifted his hand for it. Everyone has his own interest. What about the normal human being like us? I'm, I'm, I'm not the one who, who believe in, in weapons. I'm, I'm, I'm the, the one who is working with civil, civil society. I believe in, in, in peace. I, be, I believe that we deserve to live. Just so simple, not more. The subject for me is, is really emotional. I'm not a politician, but I feel it. If you, if you tell me that why, why some people, they said the Christians, they don't um, participate in this war. I will tell them, Christians are like the other components. They are divided in three parts. Parts with the government, parts, part with the revolution, and part they are neutral. But if you, you, you ask me why these people, they didn't remove their fingers, they didn't, the neutral, I mean, or the one who is with the government. The one is with the government is, is a trans social uh, 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 community created by the government, and these people, they have their own privilege. And the government helped them. They are very corrupt from top to bottom. And this is why they are defending this system. 
the one who sees the crime and doesn't do anything, doesn't lift his finger for it, he is participating with this crime. Anyway, they said in the, the casualties among women and children in any war should not exceed 2%. But according to the human, Syrian human rights organization, now the figures in, in Syria is 5.2%. I don't want to blame the international community. I will start with myself. I will start with my neighbors. I try to do my best in my way. I don't think that anyone has a right to say someone is a traitor. Maybe there is, I'm, I'm sure there is too many people in the government. They're still working, but they are honest and they are uh, suppressed by the government. They, f they force them to, to continue to serve them and to close their eyes. Anyway, do we have a component problem? Yes, we do. The problem is not in the component itself. The pro problem is is our freedom, justice, and citizenship. This is what we, we, we have a problem. It's not a question of religion. It's not a question of, of nationality. If, we con if I wanted to speak about the Christian, because I belong to this community, it's sure I'm, I have a different idea. But I try to understand why they are behaving like that. You know, they, they were subject and targeted to, to many, many um, several attacks, starting in, 19, in 1860. In 1860, um, there was uh, the biggest, um, re, uh, uh, the biggest um, fleet from, from the Syrian Christian from our area. And then, beginning of 19th century and the First World War, the number of the Syrian Christian go drop down from 40% to 20%. And after the independence, all the governments which came before al Baas, they didn't develop a national project to include everyone and to uh, um, give them the, the the feeling that they are a citizenship in this government and they belong to Syria and not they, they belong to another area. Sometimes the, the people said, we need the Western to interfere in our, to, to protect the minority. Every time the Western came and interfered in our problem, it comes so bad on the minorities and especially to the Christian. Look, in, in Iraq, for example, in Iraq, one and a half million Iraqi Christians, they were targeted, tortured, killed. Half a million, they came to Syria. They brought with them this experience. And they give it to the Syrian Christians. The Syrian Christians, they were really afraid. Um, there is no government. If you don't feel that you are a citizenship and there is no law and there is no, nothing, it's normal, you feel like a, like a minority. You have no rights. In any case, it doesn't mean that I agreed with their position. But I will tell you, starting this revolution in Syria, till now, the experts said that 350,000 Syrian Christians left the country. Why they left the country? Because they are happy? If, if the government protects them, why they leave the country? Why everybody wants to leave? It's a big, big lie. In reality, this government, they are looking only for their interest, supported by people from all components who benefit from their privilege on the account of the poor people, and especially the small components, like the Christian. 
I will tell you if Syria le the lost 350,000 Syrian Christians, these people, they will never return. It means it, it's a big loss for Syria. It's only about Christians. What about the Sunni? What about the Alawite? What about how many people left our country? And all of them, they are well educated. And they came to Austria, and the Austrians were shocked because they thought that they will work with them so much to let them integrate in this society. But they discovered that they are well prepared. They don't need anybody. This is a big loss for our country. Um, I'm sorry. In any case, I, I invite all the honest people all over the world to raise the voice for the people who, ha who are voiceless, for the poor people, for the needy. I'm, I'm working with a special project, Balsam, with the Syrian refugees. Every time I go to, the, to see them and to work with them, I need one month to recover. Because what I see, I cannot believe it. Small children, they, they teach me how, how the meaning of honesty, how the, how the meaning of dignity. I tried to help them, but they were helping me. Sometimes I couldn't, I couldn't stop myself. I was crying in front of them. I, I said, I'm coming to help them. Instead of helping them, they were helping me. And I, I wonder how people, they accept this crime to happen. We are in the 21st century. We need all the honest people to stand by us and to raise their voice. Thank you very much. Shalom, what a word.